back to American Home by Heidi. So today we're gonna make some stuffed shells with a little twist. And we're also gonna make some spaghetti um, squash boats um, with some great filling. So right now I'm down in my pantry. Yes, it's cold down here. So I'm just grabbing my things and my pantry, I like to keep some stocked up items. Today we actually have a snowstorm, so this is great because I just go shopping in my pantry, don't have to go to the store. So we're gonna be using some of our homemade sauce. This is the homemade spaghetti sauce that I canned last year. So we'll need at least one of those. And I also made paste out of the tomato skins. And then I've got some canned peaches just for later for a snack. And I store our um, spaghetti squash in our pantry here. So I'm gonna grab one of these beautiful babies. And I think that's all we need for here. So we'll go upstairs and get to cooking. To cook spaghetti, spaghetti squash, that's a hard word to say. You need to just cut it in half. Um, just take your time because they can be really hard to cut into. And then there'll be a lot of seeds and pulp in the center that you're just gonna use. This is just a serving spoon and you're just gonna scrape all of this out. When it's all scraped out, what I do is I add some olive oil to the inside of the spaghetti squash and you can just rub all that around and then you're going to want to salt them i have my oven right now preheated to 400 degrees it depends on the size of your spaghetti squash but usually it can take um it can take up to an hour 45 minutes to an hour to soften and what we're going to do with these is fill these with a filling so we're going to be using a hamburger sausage filling and to fill these and maybe even some other nice ingredients. So I like to flip mine upside down. You don't need to cover them. And then when your oven's preheated, you're gonna slide those right in the oven. Meanwhile, we're gonna be making some stuffed shells. I haven't made stuffed shells in forever, so let's get that started. Okay, so for stuffed shells, basically all you're gonna do is turn your water on. I have my stuffed shells here. We're gonna be using hamburger and sausage, but because I'm using it, not only in my um, spaghetti squash and my shells, I'm cooking one big batch at once because that's how I like doing things. So I don't have to pull everything out every time I make a recipe. So I'm just putting just a tad bit of olive oil in there. We buy our meat at a, um, from a butcher that uh, processes half cows and whole cows. So this is a one pound of hot, oh no, excuse me, mild sausage I'm using here. And I have this on about medium to medium high heat. And then this is going, just a second package here. We like a little zest, so this is hot sausage. And then I'm adding two pounds of ground hamburger. Oh, this is still a little frozen. Let me see how I can do this. This might take a little while. So we'll get this browned up and wait for our water to boil, and we'll go from there. Shells cook for about nine um, minutes or so, depending on your stove.
The hamburger's all ground up. I'm going to drain this, the pasta out, the shells out, and then I'm going to refill the pot. And I like to add spinach, which I know sounds like an odd combination, but it's absolutely delicious. I like to add spinach to my stuffed shells. It just gives you a little bit more, um, a little bit more green to your meal. If you have children at home that don't like this, this is a great way to sneak it in. Shells are so cheesy, so you're just gonna add a bag of spinach, which will look half the size once it starts boiling, and we'll get that all boiled up. And then we'll start on this. We've got about 30 more minutes till our spaghetti squash is done. And we'll get started from there. Okay, so I pulled out this little gadget here. It's this KitchenAid. And this is a cheese grater attachment that I've never used. And it's actually pretty good. So just a fun fact, your cheese, when you buy it at the store pre-shredded, contains cellulose on the cheese so it doesn't stick. Cellulose is actually not a bad thing. Um, plant cell walls actually have cellulose in them, it, but the only bad thing could be is when they go to shred cheeses and they put them in the packages, um, you don't know how much cheese you're getting versus how much, um, how much cheese you're getting versus how much cellulose. So block cheese is actually much more affordable and if you have a gadget like this, or I've got the old school one too, works perfectly well. You're actually getting pure cheese and not just a cellulose on the cheese. So um, this was pretty easy to set up and I'm just gonna show you how it works. And I bet you if you flash freeze this cheese for about an hour and uh, then put it in a freezer bag, it might just work the same without the cheese sticking. I think I'll give that a try. So we're just slicing up our shredded cheese for our stuffed shells and whatever leftovers we have, we're gonna use for our spaghetti squash boats, which are pretty well done. Our spinach is also all set here. So we'll continue this process here. here and I'm going to use half of this we've got cheese um, for my filling. This is a larger one so this is 32 ounces so it's about two cups of this. I'm going to put in and I have one egg in there and then I'm going to use some cheese and I'm just going by eye right now. That worked really well. Huh. Interesting. Then I'm gonna add some Italian seasoning directly to this mixture. And I'm gonna mix this up. my hamburger mixture directly to my cheese mixture. And what I did is I just took that spinach that I cooked and I added it directly into the sausage and hamburger mixture. And I'm gonna add that directly into my cheese mixture here. Now just a note, I was never taught how to cook Italian. So this is all me, so, but, I made it before and it's been really good and everybody enjoys it. But if you have any tips that you have, please share them. I'm always into learning different things. So that's our mixture here. And then I'm gonna take a, just a small pan like this and I'm gonna put some of our sauce on the bottom of the small pan first. Like that. Just a nice little coating. Oh, this smells delish. Okay, and then I'm gonna stuff my shells. I need my shells first. 
see. I'm gonna stuff these shelves with just a larger spoon. Soup spoon. So you're gonna just, and my hands of course are washed. You want your hands washed all the time. And you're just gonna fill these little guys up here, just like that. And then I like to set them so the bottom side's down. And I'm gonna put this in here. And you're gonna keep repeating the process till it's all done. Okay, so all our shells are pretty much stuffed. I have a couple left, but not too many. And I'm just gonna top the top with some extra sauce, like that. Oh, this is gonna be delicious. You can add as much sauce as you want, and then I'm gonna just take some more freshly shredded Parmesan cheese. A lot of people add, um, not Parmesan, this is mozzarella. A lot of people add Parmesan cheese. It's all up to you and what you would like. I actually like to add it after. So this is how I'm gonna do mine today. And you just stick it in the oven for 325 for about 30 minutes. So that's actually gonna be our dinner, but we have some extra left over. So I have a bunch of lasagna noodles in here that I need to use up. So I don't like to waste anything. And if I have everything out, this is how you can make multiple meals. Um, and I can actually, lasagna freezes very, very, very easily. I like these oven ready ones, but I've done it with plenty of other, um, just the regular shells too. But you just lay your no bake lasagna noodles down. And then you can add your mixture of hamburger and spinach right on top here. And I like a cheesy lasagna, very much so. So I will be adding just plain got cheese to this, and I'm just gonna dollop it over here because I have it. I've never frozen um, stuffed shells before. I can tell you there's some things I have frozen that don't work quite well. Egg noodles don't work well. But you could always make whatever sauce you're going to have and then make the egg noodles when you make the meal. Um, what else did we have recently? I want to say maybe it was goulash. Um, so sometimes you might want to make the goulash mixture, freeze that. When you take that out, all you have to do then is make your, um, make your uh, noodles. So that's time saving as well. Now with the no-bake noodles, I like to put my sauce directly on it to give it the moisture it needs. So when you cook it, um, when I do regular noodles, I put the cheese sauce on the top first and then the sauce. So it's all in your preference, but look at that. We already got two meals out of this ground beef mixture, which is great. Slide that across again. That takes care of that. And then again, I'm going to add my regat. In order to freeze it, all I do is double wrap it with foil. You can put saran wrap on it. I don't find that saran wrap stays. 
um, once you put it in the freezer. So I stopped doing that. So this will be a freezer meal for a different day. I love freezing these meals just because if you're busy and you just need to come home or if you have somebody that's sick or you need to bring a meal to them, this is so quick. So I just write what it is, lasagna with spinach. And then I write, um, I cook it at 325 for about 40 minutes. So that way if you deliver it to somebody or when you go to take it out, it's all set. So that's gonna go into our freezer and let me get our shells into the oven. Our spaghetti squash is done. So I'm just gonna take that out. Oh, that looks so perfect. Look at that, beautiful. And I'm gonna send our stuffed shells in again, 325 for about 40 minutes or so. I love using a timer because I don't know about you, but I always forget that I have things in there. So we'll get that started. Now I have this restless hamburger mix and it's just a tiny bit of sauce. So we're gonna make some spaghetti squash bolts. Okay, on to our spaghetti squash bolts. There are so many different recipes that you can make with spaghetti squash um, boats. Um, it's up to you what you want to fill them with. I'm just going to fill them with what I already had because I was already making, whew, make sure you don't burn yourself. I was already making the stuffed shells. I've made it with um, taco mixture. You can make it with chili mixture. You can make it with just plain old spaghetti sauce. Oh, look at those. So yummy. Delish. Uh, in our house, we will split this. So I'm going to stuff these with a hamburger mixture. I was debating on having, adding peppers and onions, but I definitely think, oh, there's my spoon. I definitely think this will be enough with just the hamburger mixture in here. So all you're adding is whatever you want. You can do taco, like I said, you can do fajita mixture, you can add chicken to this. You can do um, like a bean, um, add beans in here with some cheese. If you do the taco mix, you can just use the taco sauce or salsa. That would be amazing. So basically whatever you have available to you, you can basically put in these. And they're just so healthy for you. And extremely filling. I mean, you think it was just a vegetable, it wouldn't be so filling, but it's filling. Now, this is another little trick. So I still have ground hamburger and I have nothing else to make. So what I do is I actually will freeze this in a freezer bag and I'll write ground hamburger. Oh, it's ground hamburger and sausage. So I'll write that down. So if I'm making a spaghetti sauce or whatever, I don't have to brown my ground meat. It's already done. And I'll use this within a month, if not less. So now I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of our leftover sauce that we made into here. And I hope you see like how easy this is. I've only been in the kitchen, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour and a half maybe, um, doing this. But I have gotten one, two, three, four meals. And it, they're so nutritious, so good. Spaghetti squash reheats and freezes just wonderfully in these boats, okay? So if you're short on time, I basically made a whole week's worth of um, meals for us. Not that I use it for that though. I more so use this if, you know, we have late night meetings or we have a busy day or I don't feel like cooking. <laughs> and that happens to all of us. And I'm just gonna put the cheese on here. And again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap these guys um, in foil. I might actually put them in a, let me see what I have here. I might put them in a pan, yeah. The only problem when you do this is you use all your pans, you're like, where are you? Where are they? They're in the freezer. 
Um, that's not gonna work, right? Because I don't need two of them. So I'm gonna individually wrap these. Sometimes you just gotta pivot and do it differently. So I'm gonna individually wrap these and label them just like I did. And I definitely need some foil. That's feeling very light today. Oh, so good. And these I put in a Ziploc bag, freezer bag. Um, and you can actually technically fit two in. I wonder if I can take this off now. Oh, perfect. These are really hard to harvest. I don't know if you've ever harvested the spaghetti squash, but it is not an easy feat. All right. So because these are still warm, I'm gonna let them cool a little bit before I put them into the oven. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today in our kitchen and cooking, and hopefully you got some great ideas on how to make some freezer meals and regular meals and how to just cook things once and prepare things once and not have to repeat everything. So we had our browned meat and we made different recipes with it. We used our mozzarella cheese with different recipes, our regatta cheese with different recipes and our spinach. So thanks again for joining us. If you like this content, please give me a like and please comment below if you have any favorite dishes that you make using multiple ingredients or the same ingredient and subscribe so you never miss any more content here on American Home by Heidi. Take care, friends.